To understand Mercury in the seventh house, first we should understand Mercury and the seventh house. So here's the seventh house. It's literally the part of the sky that surrounds the western horizon. The west is where the sun sets, and that is the basis of everything that the seventh house represents. So sunset represents two things. Disappearance and non-self because the sun represents self when it goes away then that means non-self other people on the theme of disappearance the seventh house therefore represents endings like death and it also just represents things going away or travel moving to a destination now the seventh house is not particularly famous as a death house and that's probably mostly because the 6th and the 8th house have more to do with the conditions that actually lead to death. But even more so than that, if we talk about a planet in the 7th house, we get a slightly different dynamic. Because the planet that's in the 7th house will probably or will often be very strongly aspecting the ascendant. And therefore you won't get the effect of it disappearing you'll get the effect of it becoming prominent. The things that the uh, seventh house is famous for, of course, is partnership and marriage. So since it's about partners, it's also about how we intercourse or cooperate with other people. Intercourse also means sex. And the seventh house is also about that. But not just sex, any kind of interaction with other people, including any sorts of way of trading and exchanging and doing commerce. Now, what we're going to want to do to understand Mercury in this house is take these symbolisms and compare them with Mercury symbolisms. So for half a minute, let's still just kind of relax and pause and make sure that we understand Mercury symbolisms. The basis of everything that Mercury symbolizes is intellect. Intellect has to do with codes and patterns. This is why Mercury represents communication, because communication is encoded consciousness, encoded ideas. So it has to do with all the systems of encoding, like languages, maths, numbers, gestures, everything. That's all Mercury. Now, because Mercury has to do with communication, it has to do with interaction. And because it has to do with interaction, it has to do with relationships and friendships, just like the seventh house. And because it has to do with friendships, it has to do with recreation and having fun. Mercury is also the planet of learning. It makes sense if it's the planet of intellect, right? Mercury is a planet of organization. It's a very neat, efficient, organized planet because organization means your patterns are in proper order. Symmetry. Mercury represents symmetry because that means your patterns are all balanced. And because Mercury represents symmetry, it's very, very important for beauty and balance or neutrality between things. On the topic of balance, Mercury actually has a lot to do with our dexterity, our physical balance, our physical refinement, our ability to do detailed things. Now that we're refreshed on what Mercury and the seventh house represent, we're ready to put them together and see what Mercury would do and represent in the seventh house. You just have to look for how the symbolism of Mercury gets along with the symbolism of the seventh house. For example, Mercury is the planet of interaction, and the seventh house symbolizes interaction, intercourse, exchange. So we're going to want to interpret that. Another thing we're going to want to interpret is that Mercury has to do with friendship, and the seventh house has to do with partnership. And the third thing that we're going to want to uh, interpret to understand Mercury in the seventh house is that Mercury has to do with exchange, and the seventh house is about exchange too. We'll start with the synergy of Mercury being the planet of interaction in the house of interaction or intercourse. So it's because of this that people with Mercury in the seventh house tend to be very intelligent. This is one of the things. They know how to interact. 
They know how to interact with people. They also know how to interact with things. They know how to use things. And they know how to talk to people. They know how to communicate with people. They know how to learn, pick up cues. Some of the famous people who have Mercury in the seventh house, just in my small database, include Nicholas Copernicus, Carl Sagan, Herman Hesse, and Rene Gounod. So these are super geniuses, right? And they're also a certain type of genius that was very efficient in their communication as well. The other thing we said about Mercury in the seventh house is it's the planet of friendship in the house of partnership. So that must mean something important. What does it mean? It means that these people are appealing. You kind of want to be their friend. You feel drawn towards friendship with them. You want to be on their side. You want to see things from their point of view because it's easy to see things from their point of view because they share their point of view effectively because they're intelligent. So these people are relatable and they're understandable and they tend to be able to transmit their worldview into other people's points of view. Bob Dylan, Barack Obama, and then two really interesting types, Adolf Hitler and Charles Manson. I particularly would want to compare three of these people, Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler, and Bob Dylan, to see what's actually going on in these charts. And we'll do that in a second. Let's just finish up this this part of the discussion and look at the third thing about Mercury in the seventh house, which was it's the planet of exchange in the house of exchange. So what does that really mean for our interpretation? It means, again, that they're intelligent. This is the second thing contributing to these natives being very intelligent. Because, again, it means the same thing. They know how to exchange with things. And it also is indicating that they have a flair or a knack for exchange. So they know how to communicate their ideas, their ideals, their points of view in such a way that you feel like they're your points of view. And so they communicate in an appealing way and so they have also like a flair in a sense of having an art. They have a sort of an art to how they communicate. And another imp implication of this is that they're quite good with business. They're quite good with money. They're wealthy. It's not really a, a luxurious type of person. It's kind of like an economical type of person who understands money and therefore gets a lot of it. And I said I wanted to look more closely at Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler, and Bob Dylan, and it's always actually quite a good idea to do so, so that you can actually see how something like Mercury in the seventh actually works in a bigger context of somebody's entire chart, or even just bigger context, like what sign is it in? Now, why do I want to talk about these three people? Because it's so interesting that they're in a category together. If it weren't for astrology, we might not really think of putting these three people in the same category. But because of astrology and the fact that they all have Mercury in the seventh, they all wind up in this one category together. And if you think about it, they do belong in a category together, don't they? They're all sort of envelope pushers, and, but especially they're all really good at knowing how to utilize other people, attracting other people to their cause, at knowing how to take their points of view and make them your point of view. But of course, there's quite a difference in a sense between the three, even though Hitler and Manson, we might say, are kind of more similar to each other than they are to Bob Dylan, because they're sort of like on the bad guy side. And so that would be really interesting to see how is that expressed in these charts. So if we start off, right away we notice, well, Dylan's Mercury in the seventh house is in Gemini. That's pretty nice, That really because Gemini belongs to Mercury. So that makes his Mercury in the seventh house more mercurial, more textbook, more like you actually would expect Mercury in the seventh house to be. 
and more poetic and more communicative than even the baseline of what you would expect. Whereas Hitler's Mercury is in Aries and Manson's Mercury is in Scorpio, both of which are signs that belong to Mars, the planet of anger, violence, war, etc., aggression. So right away, just by looking at what sign Mercury in the seventh is in, you can already get a feeling that Hitler would be more like Manson and Manson and Hitler would be less like Dylan, even though you could put them all in the same category. Additionally, you see, Dylan's Mercury is with very close to Venus, and that Venus is the 11th Lord. So Venus, by its nature, already is artistic, and then as the 11th Lord, it's hyper-artistic. So that's what's influencing Dylan's Mercury in the 7th house. Whereas for Hitler, his Mercury is all by itself in Aries. It's just getting influenced by Aries. And for Manson, his Mercury is with Jupiter. Jupiter should be philosophical and everything. But Jupiter is the eighth lord. And it's also with Venus, who is the sixth lord. And you could say Jupiter is also his eleventh lord, but primarily by its multricone, by its male domicile, it's the eighth lord. Secondarily, it's the eleventh lord, and he's into making music and all that stuff too. And same thing with Venus, but his Venus is his sixth lord. So you really have the sixth and the eighth lord with his Mercury. These two Dustan houses, these two difficult houses. No matter what planet you're analyzing, you also want to look at certain other things like the rising sign of the moon. Let's take a look at the moon because it's very obvious with these three charts. Dylan's moon is in Taurus. Well, that does a lot of things for the moon. It makes it exalted and it puts it in touch with Venus, the owner of Taurus. Hitler's moon, on the other hand, it's in Capricorn, Saturn's sign. And guess where Manson's moon is? It's in Aquarius, another sign that belongs to Saturn. So again, it's like Hitler and Manson are kind of similar to each other in the way that they're not similar with Dylan. Even though all three of these people are like artists, these two guys on the bottom, they veered away from being artists and they became violent. Whereas the guy on top stayed an artist through and through. If you think about what's going on with the moons, it's also quite interesting. Dylan's moon is with Jupiter, who is the first lord. So his first lord is also in his Venus sign. Whereas in Hitler's case, look at his moon. It's close to Ketu, and it's super close to Jupiter, which is supposed to be good, but this is in Capricorn, where Jupiter is debilitated. Look at Manson, and he has almost the exact same signature. His moon is super close to Rahu. So this look into these three specific charts shows you how Mercury in the seventh house has this basic background template of giving a person who's very intelligent and knows how to deal with situations and people so that their points of view are understood and even adopted by others. And these people are relatable and likable and attract people and tend to become wealthy even though they're not luxurious. That's the basic template for Mercury in the seventh house. But you can see that depending upon the other conditions that Mercury is in and the other conditions of the moon and the ascendant, etc., the basic potentials of Mercury in the seventh house either veer in one direction or the other. If you want to understand the whole context of your chart, the soil in which your interpretive seeds grow, then visit my website, vicdecara.com, and click Readings. My complete chart report explains each and every nook and cranny of your chart and will keep you occupied in self-discovery for years. I also have two groundbreaking new reports. The first of these, Your Nakshatra, organizes your active nakshatras in order of their importance to you and presents the fundamental interpretations for the planets that occupy them. And the newest report, Star Strength, uses a system called Tarahabala to unfold 90 interpretations 
of the nuanced relationships between all the planets in your chart, which paints a rich and detailed picture of how your various strengths cooperate or compete with each other. Order these or any of my reports and accelerate your journey to deeper self-understanding. Thank you.